Hello everyone, Kurt Alford here and welcome back to another episode from Holford Labs. Today we're going to be continuing on in regards to our uh, discussion and observations in regards to dagger attacks and how we defend against them. Uh, today we're focusing on specifically in regards to how we may grab onto the dagger itself. And by, that, by the dagger I mean its blade and some considerations that we may need to have in regards to how to facing that. Now, before we begin this right here, I want people to understand that I am not proposing that grabbing a dagger is something that is ultimately safe. Um, I think that it is something that is done by a person that is very desperate or a person that has stopped something and is very calculated and, know, and they know what they're moving into. I say this because you see with the, not only within Fiori's manuscripts, but also other manuscripts, not just daggers, but also swords being grabbed. And that might seem kind of like an anomaly to some of us. Like, why would, why would you ever grab this sharp object? And perhaps it has a little bit of baggage with us because right now one of the things we may be thinking about is like, this is a kitchen knife and I'm going to touch this and it's a lightsaber and my finger is going to cut off. I don't think that's necessarily the case. And because of the armor of the time, I don't think these daggers were, not that they weren't sharp, but they, the focus is much more on the tip rather than it being on the blade. And those are some factors right there that we're gonna be talking about a little bit later on. But before we get into that, let's we'll start taking a look at what Fiori says. So once again, I have Vincent here set up and he is in that position of that Mandrito, whether it be a Mazzani or Fendente that he's throwing at me, right? And the big thing about this right here is that we're gonna be talking about is, once again, what happens after we make that first covering action. And remember that first covering action from this part? is somehow putting up post along in some form or fashion, daggers on the inside right here, I have X ability right here to move and do different things, etc. <clears throat> so with that being the case here, one thing that I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate so much right here is because of uh, how this thing is set up. But I'm gonna be able to show the demonstrate that everything else. I will not be able to show how the stripping of the dagger comes out. So I'll be able to show that with my own hand here as far as what we're seeing here. Um, for again, the big thing about this, big things about this, a couple things when they start talking about dagger disarms and sword disarms where you grab onto the blade. I want it to be understood right here that I don't think this is just us going straight into this right here or going right for the dagger space. Okay, if, if someone's holding something that's something that's nebulous and you can grab that, that's one thing. But any type of motion is going to become problematic. And I think that also one thing else that we have to pay, pay attention to here is when Fury talked about the times that he had no less than five times he had to fight for his armor, for his honor, with no armor and he's just using swords and he uses grimoire gloves. That's a key component here that I think that we may be forgetting about. Gloves are a huge part of the time. They're fashion statements. They're also arming statements. They're made from different materials based on what you're trying to do. So what we see in the manuscript right here may not just be someone grabbing with a bare hand. You're probably talking about someone who's wearing a leather glove weather elements, whatever, natural protection, dealing with this type of stuff, we don't know necessarily. So understand that when we look at things in manuscripts, you might not be getting all of what is being listed to right there. So keep that in mind, okay? So again, when we start talking about daggers and whatnot, and this is the image we're talking about right here, uh, you can see automatically right here, we have something that's coming in They've come in with this right here, and now you start seeing them grabbing onto the knife. And image-wise, did they grab Mitch? I think ultimately the point right here is it doesn't matter. The person's coming up. And this is because of counter mechanisms that Fiori tells us about, which are really nasty. And again, this is why we're going to start talking about counters here later on. But for today, some things here that, again, we have to remember what Fiori tells us to do in a dagger attack. Okay? The first thing that we're talking about here is to take the dagger away. And again, for me, I don't necessarily think that means take the dagger away and then do something to him. I think that means take it out of play. Get it away from you. Stop it from stop the, the, the nasty pointy metal thing from going into your meat. So just being able to come across this way here, we're covering this way as much as possible. Next thing we talk about is striking the person, binding and breaking onto the arms, and then from there throwing them, right? So again, we may be in a situation right here where we have a dagger that's in play. I've come off this way, I've struck this person, I've hit this person, I've hit this person. Something along these ways right here that gives me access into deeper consideration. 
But now I have this right here in place, and now we're looking at other anatomy things where we actually can talk about stripping the dagger away. Now, one of the things I think is very important about this is, again, when we come into this right here, this hand is going to be coming up. Whether it's coming here, here, I put myself here, put this guy, I'm coming back to it. One thing that's very important about this is that this left hand has got to stay gripped. The thing that we talked about in the very beginning, we're bringing down the arm, whatever the case may be, it becomes a mindset piece of what am I doing with my left hand? Uh, it's a good phrase of what does my left hand know what my right is doing? You know, I know that has to deal more like with, you know, if you had a left and right man or whatever the case, I know that they do. But ultimately, what I'm talking about here is I'm coming in here, I'm striking. So that's the thing that's very important about this. If I just come in here, I just stab myself. So we have to come here, we have to take it away, get access into striking, get access into doing something here, get access into striking, to taking away this person's assault capabilities. That means I have to know what I'm doing with my hands. So cross, striking coming up this way. And now when it comes to grabbing onto this, we also have to be mindful of, if I don't have it this way, I just went straight into my hand. Okay. Which of course is not a good thing for me in this situation. So all that there comes into a lot of a visimento awareness of what we need to do within the situation. So because we have, like the whole concept of the senyo, moving across in, I've got an elephant stance here. Maybe I'm not seeing this coming. Maybe I'm seeing this person come at me. We don't know. That's not the point. Ultimately here, the lesson is, person comes in this way, moving into this case right here, I'm using speed and celerity to bisect into the weak point, which is his arm, grabbing onto this person right here, strike, and I'm gonna grab the dagger. From this point, it becomes an anatomy situation on how to get the dagger out. This anatomy of what we do with the hands is very, very, very important later on. So by coming in this way right here, what I think that Fiori is telling us to do is come straight up here. You're going to bring the dagger backwards into the hand. So, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to have to come up close here so we can see that. Essentially, anatomically, my hand is very strong this way. So trying to pull it this way right here, you're pulling from all these points here. The pinky is very strong as far as holding on to things, okay? Your pinky is a, a main point of many considerations that it comes down to when it comes down to uh, breaking grip, etc. So what I think Fiore is doing here is he's going because it makes my hand lose it. By trying to go this way, you're pulling again all to those hands. But by pushing it this way, you disarm the person. And that is, again, covering in here with one hand and the other hand's grabbing on and coming this way. A couple other factors that we have to understand about this. I don't think this is just, I come up here and I'm using my hands here. Remember, effective strikes. All this musculature in here, is the musculars, uh, are the muscles, the tendons, everything that make this happen, right? So we're talking about holding on to something. So by striking onto the inside right here, turn, turning it down, you're not just, you're not just putting the arm out there. You are striking the inside portion of someone's arm, which makes it harder to grab. And by doing that right there, makes it potentially easier to get out of the grip. So. Back to Vincent over here. Again, in case right here, by putting the cross really hard as, as much as I possibly can here using pulse to longa, using that knife edge part of my arm and really striking on the inside, that weakens, that has the potential to weaken the grip. I want to say potential because we don't know. Maybe you got van braces under, underneath there. Maybe there's a lot of other things here. Maybe van braces are a lot more about keeping your grip and using protect and being able to strike on the inside than we may be thinking about. But I digress. So coming across of this here, we weaken the structure of the entire musculature of the inner, inner forearm. I start bringing this down, so I'm actually torquing into it more in the shoulder. Now where's his visimento? It's not on me, it's on his shoulder, right? And now that it's right here, I can pop this up and start stabbing him with his own dagger, okay? So again, this is tied off right here, so it makes it very difficult to demonstrate, but I guess I could kind of do it with this. 
So again, ideally what I think this is here, I've come across, this is right here. And now because I've, I've, I've torqued over, I've had this strike, I'm gonna grab this knife, I'm gonna strip it from him, and I'm gonna start coming in here and start stabbing him where, where Fiore has told me here, which is the neck region, right? The other thing we don't know necessarily, and I wouldn't suggest it, I wouldn't necessarily suggest it, if this is a razor sharp knife, if it's got edges, I definitely wouldn't. But if it's one of those historical rondels, which is much more like an ice pick and does not necessarily have any like major edge line, another option to me, coming in, coming right here, stripping this away, I might hit him with, I might hit him with the dagger itself. Again, that depends. Am I wearing leather gloves? Am I, am I wearing the things that are necessary to protect me? Am I wearing, is this a sharp knife? Do I have the potential to even see what type of knife do I have that is coming against me? All these are factors right here that we have to consider and we have to respect when it comes down to dagger assaults, at least from Fiori's time frame. And again, I'm not talking about modern day stuff right here. Uh, there's plenty of other courses out there. Again, I'm talking about the manuscript for Fiori and what I think he may or may not be saying. One last thing here to wrap, to, uh, to wrap this up is understanding a big key facet, which is that when I come across this way and I've grabbed this way, I don't just want to go, I'm coming in with this and not strike this. Some of the countering mechanisms, as soon as they come up this way, is that Fury tells this person to push my elbow so when it pushes right into my hand and I stab myself. So one of the big things about this is, don't just go for the dagger. Keep to the systematic approach in which Fiore tells us. Remember, take the dagger away, strike them, break the arm, and then from there you can work. Someone at this point is going to be trying to defend themselves like you are. And when, and one thing I tell my students, a bully that has realized they made a, a critical mistake, they cheat. Anyone who has made an assault on somebody, anyone who's trying to do something right here, anyone whatsoever that has thought that their plan worked and then all of a sudden it's not working right here and they're recoiling right in, they are now into a state of, I have to defend myself. I'm going to cheat and do everything I have to do here, which is why I say there's no such thing as a fair fight. But big thing right there, that's the observations for this right here. And uh, that concludes what we have. So as you can see with this footage right here, we're, I, I am not proposing that we just go out there and start grabbing at sharp objects. That is not it at all. And I don't think that's what Fiore meant either. Um, I think that, again, if we follow the systematic approach of what Fiori has laid out for us about taking the dagger away, striking, breaking the arm, binding the arm, throwing the person, there's a lot more that comes down to this reality of what he is trying to say. It also comes down to the concept of what exactly are people allowed to carry in towns? What are people doing here? Are the privileged elite out there able to even carry rondels in certain areas here? We don't ha I don't have all that information. And if you do, please leave a comment below because I think these are, these are crucial information pieces that we are missing out today. The other thing too that we have to consider is clothing. When we train most of these things, what are people wearing? And if people are telling me, well, I wear, I wear a gambeson and I'm wearing grimoire gloves whenever I practice against this. You know what? Good for you. Because honestly, I think that has a lot of value of what we're trying to go for. But for the most of us, what, t-shirts, sweatshirts, maybe gym pants, yoga pants? and tennis shoes, um, at best, uh, nothing on our hands, at worst, some later on fencing gloves here that we have. So these are all things right here that we have to consider when it comes down to this. I am not saying that, I am not saying that anything that we have here when it comes down to the, from disarming ourselves against this kind of, this kind of a tool of war, I am not saying that doing this right here is a sure bet. I am saying that this technique, specifically what Fiori is talking about, is significantly very important for us to understand is that this may be a desperate person. No one's just gonna go, oh yes, first thing in mind here is I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the dagger. I think that's a desperate thing right there, or it's someone that really knows what the heck they're doing. And this is why, again, if we look at the system of we have for first master, what does it start off with? That's a covering mechanism that comes in, which we torque the arm down. That right there in itself is a really great entry to being able to do anything that you're trying to go for. And whether you're trying to do the disarm right here with against a dagger, or if you're trying to do 
any of the other techniques that are out there, it is a great first way. Again, damaging, injuring the inside of the hand. It's not just grabbing out for whatever, the, just grabbing a knife that's out there in nebulous right here. So we have to cause structural damage. So we ship the person's minds, the daggers away. And again, I know there's plenty of martial art videos out there. It's like, well, you're smacking my arm here, nothing's happening. I appreciate what's being said there, but understand there are certain things that happen in a moment when we're not trying to demonstrate the effectiveness of something and when something else is happening. Uh, and it's not a one thing. It's not, I'm not just hitting it once. It's a continual thing to make something happen. Fingers in the eyes, against the forearm, anything to get the mind off the attacker from putting this into somebody and put them into something of their own body so that we can take this tool away. So anyway, a little bit, a little bit uh, long as far as talking on the, the last portion right there, but ultimately I think this is a very important piece when it comes down to Fiore, because you do see blade grabs consistently throughout his manuscript. I'm a believer in them. I'm not saying that they are something right there to do all the time. I'm saying that they are effective. I'm saying that they work and I'm saying that they're not necessarily, I'm just gonna grab this thing because I've got freaking magical gauntlet gloves on. Not realistic. What is realistic is structural damage that make that dagger less effective in hand that allows for certain access points. So with that being the case here, that's gonna wrap up the video. Um, if you've liked this, please uh, share with a friend out there. Uh, if, you've, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to the channel and also sharing out with the friends out there. Uh, love the support that I'm getting out there. Love the comments that are coming in. Forgive me if I'm not answering all the time. I'm working on trying to get as much content that's out this way, but I love what people are doing. Please continue, to, please continue to put ideas and thoughts out there. Discuss with each other. Keep it respectful and, uh, it's, it's, and a learning base right here. If you have thoughts and considerations also about potential like gloves and everything else that people are wearing at the time, what do you think? Please. Drop it down there in the comments right? If you have a link to somewhere that it shows more about historical context of clothing, please do so. These are all facets that I think are gonna aid us in this exploration of Fiori, especially with one throughout the entirety of the manuscript. But with that being the case here, everybody, until next time, as always, be safe, train well, and fight on. I will see you all soon.